Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. We have traveled all over East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need. So they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We want to support them to get better yields and increase their income. We will see how farmers can benefit from our experts' advice. While learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on this journey and share in the farmer's experiences on the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Oh, there. Oh, that mm. It is from so there. far from there. From there. Huh? Going but up it there. is beautiful. Ah. <sighs> Hello and welcome to Shamba Shape Up. Today we are in the impressive hills of Bome. And we're visiting a family that literally lives on top of the hill. And it's not only the view that is impressive. Other than building a successful Shamba. The son Nelson can build almost anything really. Uh-huh, okay. Let's go and meet them and find out more. Let's go. Let's go. Ah. <sighs> wow, this is amazing. Nelson has built a homemade tractor. Tony, this is indeed an impressive farming family. We are in Bomet and we are visiting the Coach family. Farmers Ross and Christopher, and the inventor son Nelson, and his equally talented wife Jennifer. Quite a family. A farming actually, I started uh, back in 2005 when I retired from the government. I used to have uh, small knowledge on farming, which I copied from my father. My father was a serious farmer, and uh, I copied some things. Working with the family is a good one, uh, and especially in, in our family. We sit down, especially in the evening. We sit down, what are we going to do tomorrow? So we plan first. Their farm covers six acres. Avocados are a major crop. They have over 300 trees. They have cows. And they grow vegetables too. So let's go and meet them. Hello, hello. 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 How are you? Welcome. Nelson and Jennifer, how are you? We are fine. Uh, Christopher and Rose. We are fine. How is Bomet? Ah, Bomet is fine. All right, so Shamba Shape Up is here. Yes. And you know when we come here, we always have one or two things to do here and there. Yes. And by the time we are leaving, we make sure you're fully shaped up. Thank you so but much. Before we start anything, we always pitch our tent mm -hmm. and then we'll meet you later. Right. Welcome. So okay, we'll, we'll see, see you later. later. Okay, bye. see you. Right. See you. <laughs> These farmers are doing very well, but there's always something we can do to help. That's right, Caro. And now, seeing as you have the tent up and ready, I thought I'd start with the cows. I've invited Jackie Kiprono from CKL Africa to come and take a look. Rose and Christopher are having bad luck with breeding their cows. One has failed to come in calf for over three years, and Jackie has already spotted a problem. The cow has ticks, but can ticks and worms stop a cow getting in calf? Jackie, thank you very much for being here. This is our farmer, Mr. Koech. So, tell us, what challenges are you facing with your cow? This cow we have served for three times. We served last week for the, that mm. time. So we don't know if uh, actually if the cow conceived. Wow. So we are still waiting now for another about, 20, uh, about 17 days. So Jackie, how can you advise our farmer? Luckily one of the issues of uh, animals missing the conception or not conceiving is because it's got lots of worms. Their eyes are watery because of internal worms. If you check their coat, it's not soft, it's hairy. When animal is clean, it's soft. Smooth. Smooth, yeah, yeah. shiny, Silky and we smooth. cannot see that in this cow. Dowry again, it's because of the worms. Uh -huh. Finally, I've seen the ticks, the external parasites, a lot of them. The brown, the blue ticks, in several parts of your cows. So the animals will not be healthy if they have parasites sucking their blood internally and externally. So we need to check on that. What is the connection between not deworming and spraying? with conceiving? Number one, they are causing anemia. They are sucking blood. Yeah. They are causing diseases. 
iskos fever and you know the the price of uh, treating a uh, iskos fever disease yeah. yes so there's a lot of issues if you don't manage the external parasites and the internal parasites so how often should a farmer deworm and spray the cows for deworming if you are doing the young ones below 6 months you do it monthly when the cows are older deworm every 3 months so Jackie yes which is a common mistake that farmers make when they are spraying? Holding. Where do you hold your animals when you want to spray? We use a kill where we are milking. Milking parlor is not meant for spraying. Spray. Acaricides are chemicals. They can kill humans. Mm. And milk we consume. So for that reason, you will need a very good site for spraying. What are you recommending by that? The farmer to get a very good crush. Aha. And crash you can use when you are spraying, when you are treating the animals, when you are deworming, it's an holding side. So let milking parlor be, be only for milking. Okay. Yes. Which is the best location for a crash? I'll say you look at the wind, wind direction, wind direction yes. and the terrain, it should be flat. Should be flat? Should be flat. And the wind should away be from Away from the milking parlor or where the animals stay. Yes. And I can see a site where I think we can put up a crush. So while I go look at that, maybe you and the farmer can go about mixing the products. Yeah, sure. All right. Okay, yeah. we'll see you later. All, All right. right. So let's get the crush built. It should be placed far away enough from the milking area to make sure the wind does not carry spray and spoil the milking. And while we build, Jackie is getting the tick spray ready. For external parasites like blue ticks, mix 20 milliliters of grenade from CKL Africa in 20 liters of water. Each cow needs 5 liters. So, a 20 liter knapsack is enough for 4 cows. Meanwhile, the crash is coming on well. The size should be only slightly larger than an average cow. So once inside, the cow can't turn around or hurt itself struggling. And here we are, looking good. Time to bring in the first cow. And it's fitting very nicely. To treat the eternal parasites, we are giving Nefluk. First, use a whey band to get the cow's weight. This is very important, so you can use the right dose. Check on the back of the bottle to see how much Nefluk the cow needs. For a cow weighing 300 kilos, give 30 milliliters of Nefluk. Use a syringe to supply the Nefluk into the cow's mouth. For adult cows, repeat every three months. Now, for the external parasites. Tick spray is toxic, so make sure you put on protective clothing before spray. Spray the cows from the bottom going up and from the back going forwards. This is to make sure the spray gets well under the cow's coat. We don't want the spray running off the top. And that's it. Spray every week according to the instructions on the pack. Once the cows are tick and warm free, the chances of the AI working and our cow getting in calf is much better. A job well done. Rose wants to plant beans next season, and she'd like a loan to help with the costs. When banks are asked to give loans to farmers, the first thing they need to know is where the farmer makes most money. For example, what are the major crops? The size of the farmer's profits determines how much loan the bank can approve. So, we've invited Albert Bundy, a financial expert, to explain how to go about getting a loan for planting costs. When the savings is less than what you want to do in the farm, now it comes that I need to borrow money from someone. Farmers can borrow from friends, but now we advise farmers you can borrow from the bank. You come to Kenya Women, we give you a loan. That loan you will want to buy the farm inputs. Yes. And uh, what do I need in order to qualify for a loan? If Rosa had an account and he was using the account, I will look at how Rose is using the account. If you are using your account very nicely, I just give you money because I know you will pay to pay. Oh, so I have to, to open an account? Yes. 
and then use it for for a while yes. before asking for a loan. Yes, and that's what we normally advise farmers. Every time you sell your farm produce, bank the money to create your credit history. And then you don't need to go all the way to the branch. You can use mobile banking from the comfort of your house and you can be able to uh, prove that you have that ability to pay your money, to pay the loan maybe you require from the bank. So, remember farmers, opening a bank account and keeping good records are the first steps to getting a loan. The more records you have, the easier it is to get a loan when you need one. But does the bank help farmers in any other way? We also provide you free agronomical support. How do you get your quality seeds? How do you apply your fertilizer? How do you do your spraying? Those are agronomical support that we provide for free. And on that note, let's go and plant our beans and test your agricultural knowledge. What do you think? Yes, <laughs> definitely we can do it. Mm -hmm. And then they can also be able to see practically uh -huh. how we support. Let's do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Yes. That's okay. That is fine. Yeah. <laughs> Rose has already prepared a plot of land to plant beans. So, let's see how the bank can help farmers with some practical advice. So I can see you have your seeds ready. Yes. This is the fertilizer. Mm -hmm. This is also good. So when you are going to plant your beans, they need to be in line. Mm -hmm. So which means you need to have a planting line. Make sure it's on the straight. Eh? Okay. Yes. Good. Once you have done this, we need to have the spacing right. Mm -hmm. So in this case, from one plant to the next one, you leave 20 centimeters. Okay. Then deep, we only need to dig a small hole, 10 centimeters, mm -hmm. for wood aeration, mm -hmm. for water, and nutrient management. Mm -hmm. And even managing the weeds when they are online, it becomes very easy. Now we want to do the rows. So from one row to the next row, it's supposed to be 45. Uh, centimeters so we can have our 45 centimeters here another 45 centimeters it's here then you put fertilizer add one bottle top of fertilizer into the planting hole mix the fertilizer with soil then you put two seeds per hole Always use certified seeds. That way, you only need to place one seed per hole. It's guaranteed to germinate. You cover the seeds with a thin layer of soil because if you put too much soil, the seeds are likely to rot and you will have very poor germination. So we expect after seven days, they will start germinating and you will have a uniform germination. Then you start weeding and everything. That's it. All done. Great work, everyone. At first, when I had the Kenya Women Finance Trust, I knew that there are people who are dealing only with groups, women groups. So I was impressed when they say that uh, nowadays they are giving to individuals. I didn't know that they can also support farmers in terms of information and agronomic um, advice. There you are, Carol. Yes, Tony. How is it going? The going is perfect. Did you know it's very important to keep records? Indeed it is. The farmers can know when to deworm and when to spray. Mm -hmm. When you have records, you can make a good budget. And budgets help you in buying farm inputs. But that's not all, because... Coming up right after the break... Managing Kaliandra for cow feed. And how good nutrition can keep us strong and healthy. Welcome back to Shamba Shepherd. We are in Bomet and we are visiting the Koech family. We have seen how to take care of parasites in cows and how some banks can help with both finance and with agricultural advice. But we also want to find out about managing Kaliandra for cow feed and how good nutrition can help keep a farming family strong and healthy. Without wasting any more time, let's get back to work. Back to work. <laughs> Good quality feed is vital if your cows are to do well. 
There are many leguminous fodder shrubs such as Glyrichidia and Lucina, which are good feeds for your cows as they give protein. Today we will focus on one called Caliandra. When you grow your own Caliandra, you'll have very nutritious protein for your cow all year round and you can save money from buying supplements. We have invited Moses Buloa from World Agroforestry or ICRAF to give Rose some advice on how best to manage Caliandra. Now Rose, why did you plant Caliandra? Okay, I planted Caliandra because I heard that uh, it has some proteins and it's good for the cows yes. when I mix with other feeds. Aha! So yeah. Moses, apart from being fodder for the cows, what are the other uses of Caliandra? You can use Caliandra as a soil erosion control structures, as a nitrogen fixing trees, so that it fixes nitrogen to the soil for your crops. Okay. You can use Caliandra you, to, to give you bees forage for honey. So there are several other uses for Caliandra, which are beneficial to the farmer and the farm wow. to increase productivity. Has she planted a Caliandra in the right manner and in the right position in the shamba? Uh, yes and no. Yes, she has planted it uh, in the right position in the farm, that is at the edge of the farm and on the ridge to control erosion. However, she has uh, left some gaps for ah, gaps? Yes, there are gaps. Where are these gaps? Shall the stone, uh, yeah, why not? This is the gap that I was telling you, Rose, yes. that you should have uh, bridged it okay. by planting other seedlings before these others mature so that it, they come up at the same height and at the same age. Okay. Uh, the spacing of Caliandra from one uh, seedling to the other, it should be between 30 centimeters and 50 centimeters. Good, good. Yes. Any other challenge? The other challenge I've seen is uh, weeds, mm -hmm. so because they compete for the same uh, nutrients in the soil. Mm -hmm. So it is always good to do weeding, so that it doesn't give competition to your Caliandra, so that it gives you the quantity that is required, so that at each time you're harvesting, then you get the best biomass. Any other challenge here? I noticed when the pruning was done previously, the cut was not clean. Maybe the, the panga or the secatua that was used was blunt. What is the harm of uh, cutting it with a blunt object? There will be some splits, as you can see. And when there are splits, then water will infiltrate into the caliandra head wow. and then uh, it damages the crop. So how should the farmer prune? There was somewhere oh, where uh, they, they had grown well. Uh -huh. I can go there and then demonstrate Let's how it should be done correctly. So, so Moses, why is this a good example of pruning? This reed sprout is uh, over one meter in height, which is ideal. And the thickness of the branch is not more than one centimeter. So the dairy animals can easily uh, chew it and uh, the nutritive value is still good. Ah, yes, that's so good. that is why it is always good to, uh, to do pruning after the shoots are like one meter high. The hedge should be uniform so that it gives you that aesthetic value and also the pruning height. So that you can always tell now my Caliandra is ready for pruning. One cow requires 500 uh, Caliandra seedlings oh. for you to be able to, to feed it for one year consistently. Okay. So for four cows you require 2,000 of them. Oh. Remember farmers! 30% of your cow's daily feed should be made up of proteins such as those found in shrubs like Caliandra. So, if you're feeding 18 kilos, that's 6 kilos of Caliandra per cow per day. And uh, if you maintain a good management practice, from the first day you do your first pruning, it will take you two to three months for you to come back to the first pruning. So by the time Rose goes, around our farm uh, harvesting Caliandra, it will take her two to three months for her to come back to where she started from. Mm -hmm. So by then, the shoots will be one meter high. Mm -hmm. And the thickness of the shoots will be like one centimeter thick. And the, the cows or the goats that she's feeding with Caliandra will be able to, to chew and uh, masticate well. 500 shrubs harvested every two or three months we provide one cow with feed throughout the year. Harvest Caliandra every two to three months, ideally when it's one meter tall, which is a stem less than one centimeter wide. So, uh, Rose, yes. when you are pruning your Caliandra, yes. make sure that uh, the implement that you are using, especially the panga or the knife, 
is sharp enough. Yeah. So you start from the bottom first yeah. to, to reduce the effect of uh, damage to the back. Yeah. So you cut it from the bottom and then you come and cut it from the top, but in a slanting yeah. manner. Okay. The branch is one meter, yes. and you can see the thickness is uh, one centimeter, yeah. and the, the cut is uh, in a slanting position, yeah. so that it gives you a clean slanting cut. Yeah. Yes. The advice is so useful to see the tools you are using and cutting the caliandras. I also learned that the cutting should be one meter. With me, I used to see only the sprouted, I go and cut, cut in the new, near future. The ones I'm going to plant, I'll manage them nicely, even the feeling of the cups. Welcome to the Shamba Shape Up Farming News for Kenya. In the coming week, we expect rain in the western parts of Kenya. The rest of the country will be fairly dry. There will be pockets of rain of below 15 millimeters in the northern tip of Trukana and parts of Marsabit. Kwale and Taita Taveta may get showers of up to 25 millimeters with parts of Kajiado getting up to 50 millimeters. Mount Kenya to the west and the central Kenya counties such as Samburu, Nyandarwa, Moranga and Embu will see rains of between 5 and 25 millimeters. Nairobi and Kiambu will also receive very little rain of less than 15 millimeters. North and Central Rift Valley will have rains of 25 to 50 millimeters. This includes West Pokot, Transoia, Maraquet, and Baringo. South Rift Valley will get varying amounts of rainfall, ranging from 15 to 50 millimeters. This includes Nakuru, Bomet, and Narok. Western region and Nyanza region counties also expect moderate amounts of rainfall, ranging from 15 to 50 millimeters. This includes Bungoma, Kakamega, Vihiga, Siaya, and Nyamira. Farmers, we expect the long rains to start in the third and fourth week of March and run into the second week of May. If you have prepared your land, this is the time to lime it and add manure. Dig well-rotted manure into your soil as this will improve the soil fertility. Remember to plant certified seeds that mature early. To get the specific weather forecast for the coming long rains and the best seed variety to plant in your county, call I Shamba on 0711-082-606. I am Brenda. See you next week on the Shamba Shape Up Farming News for Kenya. Hey, Jennifer! Yeah, that is Hi, it. Nelson, that is what is happening here? It's, it's a, a homemade uh, tractor. Homemade tractor? Yeah. Who made it? <laughs> we too. <laughs> <laughs> George being an, uh, an engineer, this uh, also an, uh, a living to me. My recent project was uh, a footbridge and another one for homemade motorbike, which helps in transporting produce from the farm and the feed for my cows. This is very important for me when my wife supported me. Since I was young, I used to enjoy training wires, and that passion came out to me, and I said, one day, I do this. And when I'm helping my husband, I do it because I'm also an engineer. What a man can do, a woman can do better. Hey! <laughs> that you work together? Yeah. yeah. Hello. Hey! Andrew and Fancy. Yes. yes. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yes, welcome. Yes. What is this? Homemade tractor. Home. Built this from scratch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're also here to come and build something even better for our own bodies. Okay. Wow. So yeah. it's a building thing. Yeah. It is yes. building. Are, are you ready building. to be built? Yeah. yeah. Then let's yeah, go. Welcome. Let's All go. Right. Let's go. Yeah. Lead us into your house then. Nelson and Jennifer have done a great job building this tractor. Now, I want our experts to help teach us how to build up our bodies. And it seems the government has been helping us. It's all down to fortified food. And in particular, the fortified flour used to make foods like ugali and chapati. Okay, so fortification essentially means adding particular micronutrients to a food product. Mm -hmm. For example, zinc, folate, and vitamin. Aha. Mm -hmm. So can it maybe simply mean making it more nutritious? Yes. More nutritious is the more one. More nutritious. Aha. Yes. So fancy, yes. why is food fortified? In Kenya, deficiencies are quite high. 
And that is why the Ministry of Health has really come up with this intervention so that several food products like uh, flas that are consumed by the general population can be fortified to cap these deficiencies. So currently it is a requirement that all the processors should fortify the products they are producing. For example, folates found in fortified foods is very important in preventing uh, congenital mal malformations, meaning when a woman is pregnant and she does not have sufficient amounts of uh, this mineral, she's likely to give birth to a child who has a congenital uh, malformation. I want to talk of vitamin A, that is one of the vitamins that is used to fortify these foods. It is very important to all the general population. Mm -hmm. It is important for greater development, uh, boosting the immunity, yes and also preventing the night blindness yes. for the eyes. So we are fortifying foods that are consumed in large scale. And in our case, we have talked about maize meal because every household in this country eats ugali, for example, you know, every other day. What happens with us who live in the rural areas where sometimes you only depend on the maize that you get from your granary, you have to take it to the millers. And of course, you're concerned about your health. There are other things. For example, there is uh, uh, chapati flour, mm -hmm. which is equally fortified. Even your cooking oil is also fortified. Even your kitchen salt, mm -hmm. it is iodized. So when these ones are fortified, then we are sure that they reach masses, they reach many more people. You've said we have these certified products. So where will I find them? They are found within our shops yes. because it is an order from the Ministry of Health. Mm -hmm. Yes, that all pro those products should be fortified. Yes. How will I know? a product is certified or what will I see to know this product is certified? For all products that are fortified, there is a logo yeah. that shows that this product is fortified. Yeah. And normally that, uh, that logo is circular with uh, somebody who wants to run inside. Yeah. Down there, yeah. it has been written Kuboresha Afia Ministry of Health. Okay. That is the logo that will show you this product is fortified. Okay. I did know about fortified food. Even that logo they were talking about, I thought it was just a picture they placed on their packets. That logo of fortified food, I was just thinking that uh, it is the, those food help the athletes because it's a logo of an athlete. So I gained some knowledge there. Tony, we are coming! Good. What I liked in Shamba Shepherd is that uh, when they enter into your farm, you will learn so many things. The name sounds uh, shape up and they really shape up your farm. The knowledge you gave us will put it into practice and we'll find some changes and we'll appreciate it. Our work here has come to an end yeah. and we'll see you in the next Shamba!